the second time within a few months, the Empire mourns one of her great sons of the sea. It seems only yesterday that Earl Beatty showed his still indomitable spirit by rising from his sick bed to attend the funeral of his friend and commander, Earl Jellicoe. Now he is making his last journey, to lie by the side of Jellicoe, facing Nelson in the crypt of St. Paul's Cathedral. Slowly the procession leaves the Horse Guards Parade to make its way under the Admiralty Arch and across Trafalgar Square, while the Empire pays its last tribute. In the procession, His Majesty the King is represented by His Royal Highness the Duke of York, and walking behind the coffin too is His Royal Highness the Duke of Kent. For the second time within a few months, the Empire mourns the loss of a great sea commander. When Lord Jellicoe died, Lord Beatty showed his still indomitable spirit by rising from his sick bed to attend the funeral of his friend and commander. And later, still a sick man, he followed the coffin of his dead king. Now he is making his last journey. And among the mourners are his two sons. Behind them, His Royal Highness the Duke of York, representing His Majesty the King, his Royal Highness the Duke of Kent and representatives of foreign royalty, foreign governments and the three fighting services. Beatty was a man of courage with such a fiery, dashing quality that in him, they said, the spirit of Nelson seemed to have come back. In him, as in Nelson, the passion for victory was a burning fire. In the days of the war, his consuming desire was to engage the enemy. And when at last the hour came and Jutland was fought, the indecisive battle was a bitter disappointment to him. But perhaps there was consolation when it fell to him to receive the surrendered enemy fleet at Rosai. So he will be remembered as a commander who proved that even in these days, when war is more humdrum than spectacular, the British Navy has lost none of its life and fire. <laughs>